I am the fucking hardest hustler in the world. This is Savage Part 2. Don't tell me about shit. It's 2022 and I'm still a savage. Whatever I want, I get whatever. All the allegations, accusations, and trials. What has Diddy not been accused of? Diddy, the rapper we all know and maybe for most of you, Love has been going for years and years of morning coffee for court meetings and lawyer interviews. Now, this isn't a walk in park, so sit down. Hold on tight and get ready for a roller coaster of rights and security footage into the life of famous rapper Sean John Combs, aka Buff Daddy. Diddy grew up in Harlem in New York City, where he was raised by a single mother after his dad Melvin Earl Combs was murdered when the rapper was only two years old. Melvin was a well-known drug dealer in Harlem, back in the 1970s was running around with none other than Frank Lucas, who was actually the inspiration of American Gangster. The rapper today has followed in the same steps as his late father, and as the saying says, the apple never falls far from the tree. They say, you know, you can't miss something you never had, so that, that's only a little, a little ways right, you know. Um, there's definitely been times as I, I've gotten older that I've missed my father. And, you know, his presence not being there, and I'm sorry not to ask, like, manly advice, just things that you would ask your father. Also, also things that you would celebrate with him that would make him proud, you know. My father was a hustler. He was a drug dealer. He was a hustler. So I learned early in life that there was only two ways out of that dead in jail. You know, it made me work that even harder. So sometimes you can't just answer why things happen. I definitely think the route that I went on staying out the streets and, you know, hitting my books and trying to be somebody. I think he played a role in that. I think that even if we don't know our parents, we, we still have their DNA in us. We have their genes. I have this hustler's mentality, his hustler's spirit, his drive, his determination, his swag. He's gonna be on my mind a lot today. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my father's name was Melvin Combs. You know, Melvin's son, Sean Combs. If you somebody, Ain't nobody be right back. Ooh, I need these fresh. If I come back here and get you, you know what it is. Yes, sir, I hear you. You won't have to come back. There won't be no problem. What about you, Frank? You need anything? Where's my money? Red Top gave you the package. He's supposed to be handing me my money. Here's a jar right here, 20%. Oh, you got the jar? That's right. <laughs> what the f out of here, Frank? Oh, what you gonna do? What the f you gonna do, Frank? Huh? What you doing? You gonna shoot me in front of everybody? Huh? Come on. The rapper, record producer, and executive with his own record label, Bad Boy Records, first made his debut in multiple headlines in the worst way possible in November 2023. It was Cassie, his ex that first came out with a lawsuit stating he raped and sex trafficked her, to even come out with a claim like that. It's an obvious picture that the rapper doesn't have much of a moral standing. The two have been together for a good decade. I'd say Cassie knows him better than we do since they first went public in 2012. As you can see here, the footage does not lie. He showed his true colors after he got intoxicated at the hotel they were staying at and tried to leave right after. Instead of beating women, here's an idea. Try beating substance abuse, ya yeah, prick. The two have been together for a good decade. I'd say Cassie knows him better than we do since they first went public in 2012. Reflect on the darkest times in your life, sometimes you gotta do that. I was fucked. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it, I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, I had to go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. 
truly sorry. Really? Is that all you have to say? You thought you've seen the words of this man. Wait till you hear about this 73-page lawsuit Rodney has filed against Sean Diddy Combs for 30 million. Lil Rod claims he went through some serious misconduct while working on Combs' love album. He says he was forced to film illegal activities including Combs sleeping with prostitutes while he watched and faced threats of violence. This paints a dark picture of his working environment raising questions about the extent of control and abuse within Combs' operations. A particularly disturbing part of the lawsuit involves allegations of hidden cameras in Com's home reportedly used to capture compromising footage of Jones. Jones also accuses Combs of attempting to groom him into homosexual acts. It's like a real-life episode of Black Mirror. Doesn't stop there. It mentions an incident where Combs allegedly covered up a shooting involving his son raising concerns about his influence and willingness to obstruct justice. Moreover, Jones accuses Combs of exploiting underage girls and sex workers suggesting a pattern of predatory behavior. Hello everyone. Um, until further notice, I would not be performing at any gigs or anything like that. Um, for security reasons, my family, friends, and everyone close to me it just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of and, you know, it's very scary um, for myself and, you know, it has me worried about my kids and, you know, just sleeping with anxiety and, and different things like that. So just moving forward, um, just want to pause on everything until we know that it's, it's, it's clear and safe for me to come back outside of work. I appreciate uh, you all for your love and support and everybody that knows me, etc. Thank you so much. Love. Looks like the music mogul might have been running a criminal empire instead of a record label if these allegations hold up in court. They could spell significant legal troubles for comms. The hip-hop mogul better buckle up because this legal ride looks bumpier than a Diddy remix. Just wait until you hear what Jenny from the blog had to do with this. In 1999, we're talking primetime Diddy, all around 50 and a big number for Biggie wannabes. JLo, his girlfriend at the time, comms, the bodyguard, and Jamal. Barrow, a Diddy prodigy at the time, were at the club New York in Manhattan that ended up with some shots being fired and three injured, and led the police on a chase through the night, which ended with the police finding a firearm in their vehicle. Initially, JLo and the rapper were charged and detained, but the charges immediately dropped for JLo. Around 2.20 a.m., as Lopez was filing out, Combs, champagne bottle in hand, accidentally knocked a drink out of a patron's hand. Matthew Allen, better known by his street name Scar, proved to be the wrong dude to douse in Prosecco. At this stage, reports diverge on whether Combs threw his money at Scar like confetti or Scar tossed fat rubber bandit stacks on Combs. Either way, digs were made at Combs' wealth and money was unnecessarily wasted, though it was a quick payout for club goers as people in the club grabbed for the money, according to the Daily Mail. The conflict escalated and rounds went off, one allegedly coming from Puffy's Three of the club's patrons were injured, one woman was shot in the face. Now Lopez and Com sped away in a 1999 Lincoln Navigator, but ran a red light and were pulled over by the police. They were in possession of a stolen 9mm which was found in the trunk. The pair was arrested. Lopez's horror show didn't end there. The next 14 hours were spent in a cell, where she took turns crying unintelligibly and sobbing uncontrollably, according to one police source. The cops weren't impressed. She's a beautiful woman, no doubt about it, but she looked kind of plain, Jane-ish. One cop felt compelled to tell the New York Daily News. Rest of the gang had to go through the same process for gun possession, yada yada yada. After the incident at the club, the New York Post newspaper had written that Jennifer Lopez was just starting out and was told by her team to leave him alone or she could forget about her career. After that incident, she broke up with him. After that her career took off, she should definitely give him some credit. Her dating history might just be as bad as yours. Special athletes here, it was a great party. It was weird that Puff and Jennifer were at that club because that was kind of like a very regular hip hop club. No A-list celebrities go there. We had a bunch of ballers in there and a couple of them that were just being extremely antagonistic towards Puffy and his group of friends. From that point forward, you know, uh, alcohol kept flowing and tension kept building. People probably have the impression that you're just consumed with 
the idea that you know justice wasn't served here and that somebody turned his back on you it's not a matter of you know turning your back on me like how do you call a witness to testify against your comrade that witness Shine is referring to is Sharice Myers, a bouncer who was working inside Club New York when shots rang out that December night in 1999. Around the holiday season, Mr. P. Diddy wanted to shut down the unholy rumors. On December 6, Diddy said, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Diddy wrote in a statement obtained from people, sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. I'm not a psychologist or anything, but from what I've taken from Psych 101 is that our guy was a little too defensive. A couple months in March 2023, federal agents raided his home. I mean, after having basically every defense in the police force after him or trying to get to the real story, Diddy thought it was time for a rebrand. His master plan on how to get accusations of assault and every other sin in the Bible to change his middle name to love, which is pretty strange to call yourself because these instances go back to the 90s. We're talking from romantic partners like Ventura and Gina Hine to relevant celebrities unlike himself, Drake, J. Cole, and Usher. How do I address you? You can call me Love. And you've referred to yourself differently over the years, so I gotta ask you, why so many name changes? It depends on my mood, my vibe. And Puff, where did that come from? I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> what? You said, I like when you do it like that, daddy. <laughs> when you're scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what I was talking about. Hey. Nah, nah, I mean, I was You don't called, go back no, and no, look no. at that stuff and laugh? I mean, it's, I mean, it, it could be funny. I don't really be on it like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like. <laughs> I'm you sure know, we can put Charlemagne's I, compilation against Diddy's compilation. We have a bunch. We put have yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> I, I also, I also don't do it because I know I'm, I know I'm bad at the game. Right. <laughs> 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 I know I say like reckless stuff out my mouth that's just not maybe you know adding up to with somebody who maybe somebody who's homophobic. But I'm not homophobic, and I really don't you know care. You know what I'm saying? I just. But um, I'm bad at the game, and it's probably hilarious. I would love to see it. I would love to see the video compilation. It's hilarious. 50, yeah. 50 came up here, and he was giving you flack for the asking Fab the party. So you, he'll ask you, oh, he'll ask you to play it, play it, play the clip, man. Yeah, play the clip. Go ahead. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, I, we, we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, and... No, but me and you ain't never really party, you know what I'm saying? I asked 50 about that, and he said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah, I thought he needed some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. What? Yo, why, I mean, why are you and Fib just... Hey, yo. Why are y'all not... Hey, yo, I don't have no beef. With, 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 I don't know why. With, with Fib, he loves me. Now you've heard all the rumors, raids, and hush money stories. You're probably wondering, shouldn't he be in jail by now? The answer, as simple as it is, yes. But make a short story long, this is a massive investigation and who's ever opposing him is gathering their info nicely with as much detail as they can when going against someone this big. I mean, we couldn't even fit all the people this guy is associated with. But to give you a range, it goes from Jeffrey Epstein and Prince Harry to Nicki Minaj and probably Jim Carrey with the networking skills on this guy. It all comes down to what charges are being brought up and how many each count of each charge there is. This video might have reached an end, but this case has not. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking and I'm like, you know, I'm about to go into this next era of my life. And um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of um, positive things, you know, a lot of disruptive things. Um, a lot of things I really don't want everybody, like everybody to know about. Um, so like on the gram, everybody knows about everything, you know? I want a deeper connection with my fans. So I came up with this idea. I was gonna get a special phone number and I was going to be able to give it to my family, my fans, everybody that's down with the movements that I'm about. You know what I'm saying? The team love movement, you know, bad boy, you know, black excellence, entrepreneurialism, getting money, um, vibrations, inspiration, and um, just special unique content that I'm going to share on this, on this phone. 
And also, on top of that, I also want to be able to be in communication with y'all. So when you, and when I'm in your city, I'll be able to hit you directly. And also, I will be answering questions and talking to people and accepting resumes and, you know, giving information for parties. Man, I'm just going to give out my number. 917-746-1444. 917-746-1444. So keep your notifications button on and tolerance low because we've got so much more coming. See you next time. Yo, Yentas.